this presentation about human uh, body systems and we will talk about digestive system and digestion of food. This topic is so important for your health that I uh, decided to include it and to put a special attention to it. You see at this picture, uh, the digestive system of your body is presented schematically. Digestive system of the body is consists of whole organs, mostly from all whole organs, joined in a long twisting tube from the mouth to the anus. Inside this tube is there is a thin, soft membrane, soft membrane lining of the epithelium uh, tissue called mucosa. In the mouth, stomach, and small intestine, the mucosa contains tiny glands that produce juices to help digest food. There are also two important digestive organs that are liver and pancreas, which produce juices and enzymes that reach the intestine through small connections, small tubes. In addition, parts of other organ systems like nerves and blood play an uh, important role in the digestive system. You see this schematically, this digestive system is presented in uh, this picture. Okay, you have to uh, learn about uh, names of the parts of the digestive system. It is like mouth, salivary glands, and esophagus. So unfortunately, that's uh, in science, uh, Latin names are used, and sometimes it has no sense, but if you don't know the Latin language, but okay, just remember that it is echo, fagus, and liver, and gallbladder. Gallbladder is uh, such small sac uh, where the bile, bile is, uh, uh, that accumulates, and then it is injected into the guts. So and then we have stomach, pancreas, Large intestine. Large intestine, it, 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 it has such name, not because it is long, but it is a large diameter. And also small intestine. It is not that it is short, but small di intestine. It is just small diameter. Okay, and then we have uh, rectum and anus that what we cannot digest gets out. I want to put your attention that our digestive system is very much different from other animals and especially from animals, herbivores, uh, the animals who uh, grassing, take, uh, take uh, plants, eating plants, but they are not actually eating plants. Uh, we will look at this. First, a very in important example is cow, digestive system of a cow. Cow has very big size of stomach from four chambers. This stomach consists of four chambers, and very big uh, chamber is a rumen, a rumen where this grass is collected, and uh, it is populated by bacteria, and uh, bacteria consume this grass and convert, uh, convert this grass to energy, and uh, grow on this grass, and when uh, then, okay, we will look, uh, we will read here. So the cellulose from grass is food for bacteria. And bacteria also food for protozoa, for small uh, microorganisms that are that preying on bacteria. Both bacteria and protozoa breed in this warm porridge in the stomach, in the rumen, uh, and uh, then they, they are uh, uh, it, uh, they multiplied very crazy at an absolutely fantastic rate. When the concentration of microorganisms reaches a significant level, the cow sucks all the liquid together with the microorganism into another section of the stomach, the abomasum, abomasum, it is this, you see here. It is sucking with this, according to this uh, way, it is sucking to abomasum, and what is happening there? Uh, the cow, uh, that, uh, it is, is squeezing, squeezing grass, and uh, and grass, if it, uh, it, 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 a cow is chewing uh, grass again, but all the liquid, it is squeezed and uh, go to from abonaf masum, it, it is uh, going to another section of the uh, stomach, and uh, then it is treated with hydro hydrochloric acid, and cell then cell membranes 
get destroyed by hydrochloric acid and contents of the cells of this microorganism is absorbed into cow blood stream through the intestinal wall, so in the guts. So cow kills and eat living microorganism, not grass. Cow does not consume grass. Bacteria eat grass and cow eat living organisms, bacteria and protozoa. We may consider that cow and other ruminants as carnivorous animals that are predators, but they predate, uh, predate not on other animals, they uh, not in, uh, predate not on this um, microorganism. So, and grass is used as food for this microorganism. Cow don't eat grass. Cow eat bacteria and kill and uh, eat bacteria. So gorillas can be considered, and uh, this, they are considered genetically close to humans, but they have very different digestive system. That is, uh, the system more resembling uh, the, the digestive system of in horses. Like horses, gorillas are processing food primary in their extra long, large intestine uh, that uh, in, not in stomach. So th they have different digestive system. You see, like, the same like horses, they have very, very big size, uh, large intestine. And uh, then uh, the food, pardon, uh, you can see uh, more clear at this uh, picture, with, with, with digestive sim systems on humans and other animals compared. So this is our digestive system. And it is very much different from orangutan and from primates and from horse. Horse have very big size, uh, large intestine. And the orangutan have also very large, uh, in large intestine. And we have a relatively simple and relatively short uh, digestive system, which is a little bit closer to the digestive system of a dog. OK, then let's return back. So uh, gorillas, uh, gorillas and the chimpanzee and other primates are eating all day, eating these uh, fru fruits, vegetables, and leaves, and they get energy from this. But again, they not, don't consume grass and, and then green plants. Bacteria eat this grass, and only that uh, gorillas kill and uh, use bacteria as food. And uh, then uh, volumes of the stomach, small intestine, and the colon in modern humans is much uh, smaller than the, uh, this of other animals. Much smaller. So volume of in humans is less than 20% uh, of the total. So you see that uh, uh, humans are red color and they have very small uh, colon, very small uh, part of the large intestine and also they have a relatively small size of uh, stomach and, uh, and uh, small intestine re relatively big, but again, it is uh, not as big and so it, it is not as big as in comparison with, uh, with uh, uh, dogs, for example. So, okay, here we, ca we compare gorilla and humans and gorillas are eating green grass, plant, plant food. They eat not, they, they don't eat it, they, they just use grass to, to feed uh, uh, bacteria. And they consume bacteria afterwards. So they eat up to 18 kilo, 18 kilo of food a day, 18 kilo of grass and, 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 and green leaves a day, 18 kilo. So it's a lot of food. We cannot digest so much. Our stomach is small, our guts are our small volume, and we need uh, uh, food which is much more dense in calories, much more dense. And in particular, we need meat and we need animal products. So at this picture, we again can compare the digestive system of human in size with digestive system of herbivores, so the, uh, the animals that eaten, uh, that they use as source of energy, uh, plants, plant food, and carnivore. Carnivore are that's, uh, like dogs, or wolves, and, uh, and uh, tigers. They have a small stomach and uh, very small and relatively small uh, short intestine and large intestine. Humans are something between. They are, 
humans considered omnivores. Omnivores, it means they can eat uh, plant food, but not much. We better prefer, better use uh, animal food. But if there is no animal food, we can, we can survive on plant food, but not, not too long. Here, uh, the stomach is uh, schematically represented. So food is coming here, and the stomach inside have uh, juice, gastric juice. This gastric juice is full, is, uh, has a high concentration of hydrochloric acid, and hydrochloric acid is uh, reacting with proteins and fats, and uh, also, and it, then there is uh, digestion. I mean, the, uh, when it reacts, then a gastric juice has, uh, as I said, hydrochloric acid, but also enzymes, in particular lipase and pepsin. Lipase is enzyme which is breaking uh, down uh, fatty, fat, animal fat and other fat. And pepsin is, uh, uh, is enzyme that breaks down uh, proteins to, ascorbic, to, uh, um, to acids, to um, it's, uh, amino acids. Well, and then also what is important, gastric juice is necessary to inactivate microorganisms, to kill microorganisms. Otherwise, we will get a lot of uh, pathogenic uh, uh, bacteria in our gut, and this pathogenic area, uh, animal, uh, bacteria can uh, produce uh, toxins, and these toxins can kill us. So altogether, uh, we can distinguish five uh, juices, digestive juices. It is saliva. Saliva already have uh, some enzyme, mostly to uh, digest uh, carbohydrates. Then we have gastric juice with uh, uh, enzymes to digest fat and uh, uh, amino acids and uh, protein. Then we have pancre pancreatic uh, juice. It is also with uh, some enzymes to further uh, digest uh, protein and fat, and also intestinal, intestinal, intestinal juice and bile. Bile is a very uh, important part of the digestive juices. Bile, we need bile uh, to digest fat, and if we don't produce enough bile, uh, then we are in big trouble because we cannot use fat as source of energy. So these uh, digestive juices are secreted from uh, salivary gland, gastric, pancreatic, intestin intestinal, and hepatic gland, respectively. Okay, here, please uh, check uh, this uh, picture and uh, remember the names. So we have small intestine, which are, uh, represents that small diameter over the intestine, but length, length can be up to five meters, and we have. Uh, colon, and we have colon and the large intestine, they are, they are big in diameter, but relatively short. So large intestine uh, is uh, to absorb water in electrolytes. Also, some uh, it is full of bacteria, we will talk about this later. And anything what is not digested, go, go outside, through the rectum and the anal channel. Canal. Okay, then what else? If we look inside a uh, small, uh, small intestine, we will see this such beautiful picture that we have a finger-like structure inside. That, uh, and this finger-like structure to increase the surface uh, of the intestine, so to improve uh, uh, the digestion, to, to get more nutrients from the food, from the digested food. And if we will look at these finger-like structures, we will see that at these finger-like structures there, is, there are small, very small also, uh, small uh, finger-like structures like the, with name villi. And uh, inside of these villis are capillaries, capillaries, uh, blood capillaries, and uh, lymphatic capillaries. Uh, lymphatic capillaries presented blue uh, by green color, and uh, 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 the blood capillaries are represented with, green, uh, with blue and red color. Red color, it is from arteria, uh, and, and blue color, it is corresponds to blood go to veins. veins. Here schematically represented this villus, villus, villus. and uh, then we have epithelium layer, very, very thin layer of uh, cells, one, one uh, cell layer very thin, and it has some structure at the surface, and we have also a special uh, cells which produce mucus. This mucus is to protect 
the inside of the guts from damage. They, this mucus work as a protective way and also as a lubricant. It should not be damaged. And if you eat too much cellulose, uh, which we cannot uh, digest, then this cellulose can st scratch the surface of the guts inside and can destroy this uh, mucus layer, and then you will get big problem. So cellulose is not good food for us. Okay, then here again uh, represented the part of the intestinal uh, villi. And we have these goblet cells. Goblet cells are cells producing mucus, protective layer of mucus. And here we can see that mucus have two layers, some relatively dense, dense and uh, layer, and some uh, layer of more elastic, more uh, visco less viscous here. And the nutrients are small molecules, very small molecules of amino acids and uh, small molecules of fatty acids are coming through this protective layer of mucus and coming to the membrane of the epithelium, epithelium cells and to inside the epithelium cells. This is very, very also interesting uh, how they work. Okay, here again, scheme of the intestinal uh, wheels. And we have these capillars, lymphatic capillar and blood capillar. And here, uh, what uh, kind of uh, enzymes we know. Actually, uh, our body can produce up to 40 uh, different, member, um, different enzymes. But interesting that it is not enough. You think 40 um, uh, different uh, enzymes is, is much. No, actually, we, we don't uh, have enough uh, enzymes. And if we consume with food some additional uh, member, uh, uh, enzymes which are not produced in our body. For example, papaya salad have um, enzyme papain. Papain helps to digest food and so that eating papaya salad is useful and it helps digest food. So as I said, uh, I'm, uh, the nutrients are coming through the epithelium layer and through the mucus and the epithelium layer as small molecules of glucose. Glucose is a result that hydrocarbons are uh, enzymes uh, uh, split uh, hydrocarbons, uh, carb pardon, carbohydrates to glucose molecules, and glucose molecules uh, coming through the epithelium layer and epithelium layer and to the bloodstream, and it is easy getting to the blood and coming to the blood almost very quick. So you are getting very uh, after you eat, you have very high concentration of energy in your blood. This concentration corresponds to glucose. Uh, quite similar situation with amino acids. Amino acids are relatively easy uh, can uh, get to blood and they go to all your body and ca they can be used as uh, building blocks to produce proteins for your body. Mostly it is used as building blocks, as, not as uh, nutrients, not as a source of energy. And we have f uh, fatty acids, fatty acids and glycerol, and also uh, so-called mono, uh, monoglycerides. Monoglycerides, it, it is when one glycerol has one fatty acid uh, connected. And these molecules are not easy to get uh, through the, uh, to the blood system because fatty acids are hydrophobic. They cannot uh, be dissolved in blood, especially if, it, if these fatty acids are long and much hydrophobic. Then you need special uh, transportation of this fat and this fatty acids and how it goes. We will look at this picture. So we have uh, bile helps to digest fat, you see bile. And bile particles work as a soap and they break a large piece of, large droplets of fat to smaller, uh, more, uh, small pieces and then we enzymes break them into fatty acids and, uh, and mono, mono glycerides here. Fatty acids, fat is breaking with lipase, with enzyme lipase, breaking to mono, uh, mono glyceride and fatty acids. And these fatty acids coming, but they're coming through the uh, membrane of the epithelium cells, but then inside of the epithelium cells, they combine again into fat molecules and they uh, again transported, but they transported 
not as fat molecules, but they're transported in some special vessel. Here, okay, here schematically we again see that that short chain fatty acids can be transported. Uh, short chain fatty acids, uh, they are coming mostly from uh, bacteria in our guts. Uh, friendly bacteria produce uh, short chain fatty acids. They can go to blood and then can be source of energy for your brain and other cells. And there are so-called middle, uh, middle uh, chain uh, fatty acids. They also can, in principle, can go to the blood. And there are long chain fatty acids. Long chain fatty acids, they are uh, combined and together to, to the small particles of fat, and they can be trans transported in a special vehicle, which is uh, uh, chai lo micron. Chai lo micron, it is a special vessel. We will see it uh, in next next slides. Okay, you see that absorption of fat can be uh, can be. Uh, different for short, uh, short chain fatty acids, it was like, uh, as I said, bacteria produced, they can get in, inside the bloodstream relatively easy. But uh, long chain uh, fatty acids, uh, then they, uh, they combine with bile and they produce kind of spherical complexes, my, my cells, and they enter the intestinal cells together with bio, together with bio. And they uh, form some protein-coated molecules and protein and so some micelle, micelles, micelles, and they go to lymphatic system. And they go to lymphatic system, uh, such spheres. So these spheres have membrane. This membrane uh, mostly consists of from phospholipids phospholipids, and inside we have these fat molecules, and we, inside we have also esters of uh, fatty acids and, uh, and cholesterol. Cholesterol is, not, we have not so much cholesterol, because cholesterol is mostly to stabilize membrane and also to, and to produce uh, esters of cholesterol and fatty acids. Cholesterol, we need cholesterol to transport fat. If there will be no cholesterol, there will be no, no transport of fat. Okay, and then, as, as I said, they are transported in some special vessels. Spe first, it is a uh, chylomicron, 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 such big, big vessel. And then it is split it to so-called very low density uh, lipoprotein and uh, intermittent uh, density lipoprotein and uh, low density lipoprotein and uh, high density lipoprotein. Somehow, Medical uh, doctors uh, confuse the uh, name of uh, lipoproteins with cholesterol. They call um, uh, low-density uh, lipoprotein, they call bad cholesterol, and high-density lipoprotein, they call good cholesterol. This is really stupid because this is not the same. Cholesterol is substance. It is a small part of, the, of these lipoproteins. Why then? And especially dangerous when um, doctors try to, uh, to prescribe uh, some special uh, medications uh, named statin, named statins, and these statins, they, um, they uh, suppress production of cholesterol in your body, so your body cannot digest fat. So you, uh, your, the only source of energy for you then with statins, only glucose, only carbohydrates, no fat. And uh, the use of uh, sugar and uh, carbohydrates as source of energy is very dangerous. It is ma making you actually sick and uh, your aging, uh, the people aging very quick. Okay, here sizes of the high density uh, lipoprotein and the low density lipoprotein. This, you see the sizes are relatively small. They, uh, it is, they, uh, the lymph, uh, lymph, lymph in the lymphatic vessel, when it is full of this, uh, this uh, vessels, they, it looks like milk, white color, like milk. And it is good because it just shows that uh, you use fat as source of energy and this, uh, uh, these vessels are coming to blood and then they are mixed with blood and blood brings these uh, vessels everywhere. And uh, then the size of the vessel is uh, get reduced because fat go and used uh, by cells as a source of energy, and the size of this lipoprotein is, is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. And when it is really getting very small and high density lipoprotein, what is happening? High density lipoprotein. It has uh, 
uh, this cholesterol. It has uh, some amount of fat, but not much. And it has phospholipids. So it is getting to liver. And liver produced from this uh, high-density uh, lipoprotein, it is produced bile. And it is very important that uh, bile is produced in your body because bile uh, helps to remove toxins from liver and from your body to, to, to move these toxins into intestine and then outside. Without uh, enough of cholesterol with food and without, without enough cholesterol produced in your body, your body accumulates toxins and eventually it's, uh, it's getting sick. Your body getting sick. Okay, here again, structure of low and ultra low, low density lipoproteins. And um, then you see this fat inside. You have also cholesterol, uh, cholesterol, cholesterol ester here. And you have some proteins and cholesterol also uh, to stabilize the uh, membrane. And such vessel is getting first to lymphatic, uh, uh, to lymph, and then from lymph to blood. And uh, when it is moving in uh, lymph, it is coming through a uh, number of nodes, so-called nodes, and uh, then it is getting clean, for, uh, clean and it also uh, toxins are removed in lymph, and then, uh, then it is getting to blood, and then it is getting to heart and mixed with blood, and then circulate in your body. What is interesting is that you have a lot of bacteria in, the, in your guts. Bacteria, even with high acidity in your stomach, some bacteria are getting through. And they populate your guts, and they use your uh, uh, not digested food as a source of energy, as a source of food. Uh, we just jump a little bit. So, and a lot of different, uh, different bacteria can be in, in your uh, guts. And they can be, uh, super, can be classified to friendly bacteria and unfriendly bacteria. Friendly bacteria, they are very good for your body. They produce vitamins. They produce vitamins. They also keep your guts healthy. Unfriendly bacteria, they eat mostly protein. If you, uh, eat, uh, if you, not, uh, if you eat uh, not good food and if your uh, protein is not digested, then unfriendly bacteria use this protein as a source of energy and they produce a lot of toxins and nasty smell, smelling gas, disgusting, disgusting uh, this, uh, people are farting, farting with nasty gas and uh, it is not nice and again uh, this gas also get into blood and uh, all your body get poisoned. So the idea is you have to uh, provide, uh, you have to increase number of friendly bacteria, and you have to provide good food for your bacteria, good food that that good for friendly bacteria, and not to give them eating protein. If you provide protein, if you don't digest protein, then unfriendly bacteria will develop and they produce toxins and will destroy your body eventually. But friendly bacteria don't eat proteins. Friendly bacteria eat special uh, special substances which uh, has name, pardon me, I will go a little bit quick and then we will return. They use, mm, 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 sorry, oh yeah, they use starch, starch like uh, potato starch and, uh, uh, and uh, powder of starch uh, dry powder, but you, you use it with water and uh, don't heat it, but just starch, swallow starch, or otherwise you can use mushrooms. Mushrooms are especially good for your guts because uh, it, they not only provide food, but they provide lubrication of your guts. So we will jump a little bit uh, back, sorry, that's, uh, and then we will talk about, uh, about what food you have to, you are supposed to eat and what is uh, a large intestine is uh, consist of large intestine has a little bit different structure from uh, small intestine this uh, villi villis is not so big instead uh, especially here you can see that they are not big they, that's 
surface not big, but yet you have blood capillaries inside and lymphatic capillaries because uh, water and mineral salts are uh, that's getting from colon, we get into blood. Okay, this you see here. And here it's most schematically presented that you have the surface of the large intestines arranged so that there are blood capillaries and the lymphatic capillary. And a bacteria that are living in the, uh, in the uh, large intestine, they produce short chain fatty acids, which are very good for your health. They produce also vitamins, and these vitamins are getting to, uh, to the bloodstream here. This is why we need uh, this, blood, uh, this blood, uh, blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. So, as I said, uh, we have to consume food which is uh, rich in nutrients, rich in calories. And this food is almost, uh, what, what is the best food? It is uh, meat, fish, and poultry. So, especially meat of ruminants, a cow and uh, some lamb and goat, etc. And um, you have, you can eat also uh, pork and 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 uh, poultry. Eggs are very good for you. Eggs are maybe number one for health. And some amount of fat is recommended. But fat, animal fats, animal fat and cook is only exception from vegetable oils. It is fruit oils. Fruit oils are uh, the olive oil, avocado oil, and coconut oil. Okay, uh, meanwhile, this is my opinion. Again, it is, I'm a professional scientist. I'm not a medical professional. And uh, uh, medical professionals, they recommend to eat a lot of vegetables. Maybe 100 years ago, it was a good advice. And, but now, all fruits and vegetables are full, full of toxins. These are herbicides, this are, these are insecticides, other toxins, natural toxin, toxins in the vegetables. So when you consume a big, large amount of fruits and vegetables, what is happening, all these toxins get into your blood, and then from blood to liver, they, they first uh, can uh, damage your liver, and they also uh, damage other organs. We are not birds. We are not chicken. Birds are adapted. They have special digestive system, and they are adapted to eat seeds. Humans are not adapted to eat rice or other grain, not adapted. It, it, it also includes bread. Of course, with technology, we made it a little bit more digestible. We can make bread and noodle, and we can boil, and then uh, it, it will be better digested. But yet, there are some uh, quite number of uh, toxins in uh, plant food, in grains. And uh, we, uh, in difference from chicken, we are not developed, we, we were not developed to eat grain. Chicken eat grain, but uh, special uh, uh, design, special uh, that they have special stomach. They have crop. Crop is a part of the stomach, which uh, then if chicken eat grain, then this grain go to crop and stays for a day in very wet environment and, and uh, also warm environment. And in this environment, uh, grain start to germinate, start to germinate, start, start to grow. And when uh, uh, grain germinates, it removes toxins. The toxins are expelled from, uh, from uh, growing grain because uh, toxins, uh, uh, the, the grain, when it is germinated, it does not need toxin. It is removing toxin. Toxins go further and, uh, and chicken have very big size liver and very big uh, gallbladder. Uh, so a lot of bile uh, can be produced and the chicken uh, uses bile to remove toxins, to remove these toxins from, from the digestive system, to remove it out. And then when you see that, uh, that feces of the chicken, you see that the color of the feces uh, very often very uh, dark green, even very, very dark like black, black color. This is color of the bile. Bile is used to remove toxins. And people not produce so much uh, bile, and then we are not so good in removing toxins from our uh, body. 
So we better reduce the amount of toxins which are coming with food and better not eat uh, grain, not eat uh, rice and uh, bread, especially wool, uh, grain, bread, but we better eat eggs. Eggs are number one in, in, all, in, in all nutrients and they have everything. They have all minerals and they have uh, very good quality fats and they have proteins. So, as I said, here I explain why chicken uh, can eat a lot of uh, grain. They can eat uh, uh, 150 gram of grain in average per day, it's a lot of grain. But then, uh, because of special design of the digestive system, the grain uh, is, uh, the toxins are removed from, from grain. Another danger is that oxalic acid. Oxalic acid, I was talking about this already in previous videos, that oxalic acid is very dangerous and it is uh, it present in, um, that's in vegetables in large amounts. And if you eat vegetables, then this oxalic acid gets to your body and then it reacts with cal calcium ions in, in your body. And then uh, crystals of calcium uh, oxalate are formed and these are like sand particles. So inside of your tissues, you are getting like, uh, like sand particles. And imagine how, um, w uh, this, how much mechanical damage these sand particles can produce because if you're moving, your uh, tissue moving and uh, these sand particles are scratching and destroy uh, cells, so nothing good. So and to remove these uh, sand particles is very difficult. Uh, very common uh, that uh, if you eat too much uh, vegetables, uh, the stones can be produced in, uh, uh, in kidney, in kidneys. And here the stones uh, removed from kidney are presented, so it needs operation, very uh, painful in, uh, operation to remove these stones. And uh, another danger is that these oxalates can produce special uh, uh, crystals, which are in form of needles, very sharp needles. And uh, when these very sharp needles are in your tissue, they damage a lot of uh, cells. So they produce a lot of damage. And to remove oxalates from your body, it's very, very difficult. Also, uh, grain, especially wheat, contain gluten. Gluten, it is a protein, a plant protein, but it is uh, toxic because it is what it's doing. It is uh, producing inflammation in your gut. And when your gut is inflamed, there are gaps between, uh, uh, between uh, cells of the uh, epithel uh, epithelium here. Yeah? And through these gaps, even big bacteria can get into the bloodstream. So you're getting sick from bacteria, you're getting sick uh, from uh, toxins which are coming uh, to the bloodstream. So it is very bad. So you see that uh, proteins, uh, plant proteins can uh, can, can damage your health. And eventually, uh, consumption of vegetables and plant food, they, uh, they uh, result in development of atherosclerosis and gout. Gout, you, uh, in, you probably saw such fingers uh, of old people. They have a lot of pain. A lot of pain, this is very nasty uh, disease and uh, not diff very difficult to remove and to cure this. And even to such extent, the fingers uh, will, and the bones uh, can be much deformed and a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Another, another complication is uh, uh, the psoriasis. Psoriasis is typically uh, on, on legs, but not on, on legs. Uh, when I came to Thailand, I was a bit stupid. I didn't know what to eat, and I was eating a lot of fruits. And I, I, it resulted uh, in development of psoriasis on my uh, hands. This is not my picture, but I, I, was, I, have, I had such complication. Psoriasis can be even on face. But in my case, it was on, on hands, like this, like here. Yeah, so this is a result that you eat too, too much uh, uh, vegetables and fruits with toxins. As I said, uh, you need food for good bacteria, but instead of giving cellulose as a source of uh, food for good bacteria, because cellulose is scratching all your, in the inside of your guts and damaging the guts, damaging this, uh, this protective way of mucus, 
So inst instead, you can consume starch powder. It's powder, uh, potato starch is probably the best, and next would be cassava. Oh, cassava starch. Very good, very good quality. Okay, what else? As I said, mushrooms are especially good, especially if you have money, uh, then uh, that's, it would be your choice to eat mushrooms. Mushrooms are the best uh, to, to lubricate uh, the inside of guts and to provide proper food for your friendly bacteria. So, and you see that if you eat uh, the mushrooms, then you have beneficial bacteria, beneficial bacteria. So, do it, do it. If you have enough, uh, enough money, you can buy uh, mushrooms. I used to, mushrooms have ketin. Ketin is such substance which quite similar to cellulose in structure, but it has ammonia. And with ammonia, more uh, useful bacteria can be produced, more useful substances can be produced by friendly bacteria. So it is really better. Uh, when uh, a few years ago, I was growing mushrooms myself. These were oyster mushrooms, and this is not my picture, but I, I did it all quite similar. And I was growing a lot of mushrooms, and uh, or you can buy mushrooms. This, this is such kind of mushrooms are not expensive. And what else? Uh, as I said, the food number one for your body is eggs. Eggs have a lot of uh, protein, and they have uh, a good number of healthy fat, Healthy fat, what is important? Healthy fat, especially if chicken are free range. So free range means chicken have, uh, can eat uh, insects, can go to sun, can eat grass. If they stay in, in some companies, very, very, very uh, limited space, then these eggs are not so good quality, actually. Better to buy eggs from ducks. Ducks in, in this country are uh, free range. They, go, uh, they are eating grass in uh, rice fields, they eat uh, insects, they eat snails, and they are on the sun, so the uh, eggs from these uh, ducks are very, very healthy. This, this is why I, I buy mostly duck eggs. And of course, some spices are good for your health. For example, onion and garlic in small amount is good. And uh, what I normally do, I buy such uh, chopper, and then uh, I cut uh, onion and garlic and blend it with eggs. And sometimes I separate uh, yolks from whites, but it is not necessary. Not necessary. I just try to evaluate what uh, weight of the yolk and what weight of the whites in the eggs. And uh, then I mix it, mix it with this, with whites or with uh, yolks. And then I make scrambled, scrambled eggs. Scrambled eggs and with coconut oil. As I said, coconut oil is the best uh, type of uh, fruit oil, which you can buy here relatively inexpensive. And uh, then the scrambled eggs can be produced and they are very good fat. When, there was time uh, when I was eating more than 10 eggs a day together with mushrooms that I was growing. And then it was so good for my health, health that all people were telling, you look so good, so, so much uh, healthier than before, just because you eat uh, good food. Okay, also uh, the importance to eat eggs is uh, illustrated by this photo. This was Chinese student, I don't remember his name, but look uh, how he was uh, before he started to eat a lot of eggs. And then he was eating a lot of eggs, going to gym, and eventually, he got a champion. He became a champion of bodybuilding competition. He, he, he got absolutely perfect, beautiful body. The same works for girls. girls. So if you eat enough eggs and you go to gym, you will have perfect body, perfect, absolutely perfect body. So I recommend it. Uh, one problem when you eat only carnivore diet, uh, full carnivore diet, and you don't have enough mineral minerals, uh, it's electrolytes. So by uh, science, you are supposed to eat at least five gram of, of sodium, sodium, not sodium uh, table salt. Table salt you need more, but sodium you need five gram sodium, better maybe eight gram from five to eight gram. This is safe. But doctors recommend, government recommend twice less. This is stupid because your body needs salt, needs salt. 
And uh, more than salt, you need potassium. And uh, potassium, so the, the table salt, you need 10 or uh, 12 grams a day, table salt. And potassium chloride, potassium chloride, unfortunately, you can buy it, it only as a supplement uh, in special shops. In Lazada, you can, for example, you can buy potassium chloride. In magnesium chloride, you need more than five grams a day uh, magnesium chloride. Uh, and magnesium chloride, uh, pentagidrate, such substance you can buy. And potassium chloride. Potassium chloride, as I said, you need a lot, about twice more than uh, sodium. Unfortunately, as I said, uh, when you eat uh, follow carnivore diet, uh, mostly food, what, what you consume, is rich with uh, sodium and not, have not enough potassium. So it should be like about this ratio, or better maybe here, somewhere here, okay? Here at least you see 20, 200 to 20, 100. so it is better in this area. But in this area, there is no food which is which has more uh, potassium than sodium. So if you eat only pork and lamb and other uh, food, meat, they don't have enough potassium. So you have to eat these supplements, potassium chloride and magnesium. And unfortunately, magnesium content in vegetables, not enough, again, not enough. You cannot uh, get enough magnesium in vegetables, so you have to supply. You have to buy this magnesium penta pentachloride or uh, Eps Epsom, Epsom salt, and then it is also good for you. For you. And um, so this is what I do, no worry. Okay, that's all. That's all what, what you have to remember. This is again my opinion. I am not a professional uh, medical, uh, not a medical professional, so it is, uh, it cannot be considered as medical advice. It is just my opinion. But I follow this opinion and it works. Also, I have other people who follow my opinion <clears throat> and they uh, report uh, much better health than before. So I think it, it is worthwhile uh, to follow science. And I'm a professional scientist. And all this research about uh, supplemental magnesium, supplemental potassium, uh, it's well established well-established research and uh, then also uh, you see result uh, that if you eat proper food how uh, beautiful can you can be your body from this body you can develop a really strong and helpful helpful body and not to mention that eggs are good for your brain the scramble eggs are very easy to produce and not not expensive so Again, I, I highly, highly recommend you to eat, but also onion and garlic in small amount, not much, uh, not, uh, not much garlic, not much uh, onion, but it is spices are making your food better. And spices working as bio enhancer. They improve a positive change in your diet and then you feel much better. Okay, as I said, duck eggs better and they have enough protein. Mushrooms are absolutely necessary to, for your stomach to protect your stomach from problems. And you will never have this psoriasis. You will not have this problem with gout and you will be healthy till very old age. And uh, then you will have the, not, not have this leaky gut syndrome, so-called, and you will have no problem with oxalates and with stones in, in your kidney and in your gallbladder. Bladder. It's uh, all will be good because you are not chicken. You are not supposed to eat a lot of grains. Better eat eggs or port poultry. Eggs are even actually better. And uh, then, as I said, food pyramid should be so that you consume more meat, maybe seafood, and uh, then uh, eggs and poultry and fish and seafood and some amount of animal fat, and this is, this is very good. And remember that you need uh, animal fat. You cannot eat mean, uh, lean meat. If you eat lean meat, uh, then uh, you will get complications, uh, kind of so that uh, your body to consume proteins and to use proteins as building blocks, they need energy which is coming from fat, from animal fat. If you eat enough of animal fat, it can be butter, Okay, but, but it's not much, but coconut oil, it can be an uh, lard, 
and uh, other tow tavo and uh, uh, fatty meat, then in the fat in eggs, it is also very, very healthy. So if you follow such <coughs> diet, then you feel much better, much more healthy. And uh, what uh, doctors do, they, that they um, prescribe statins. Statins make your body dependent on uh, carbohydrates as a source of energy. And this is not healthy. Trust me, it is not healthy. Again, I, I just my opinion, but nevertheless, it works. And OK, then you see beauty of your digestive system that it is so perfectly done, so perfectly arranged. So be careful. Take care of, of your intestines. Take care of your health. Take, take care of your body. Then you will be healthy. And what is <coughs> also very important, to keep uh, gastric juice very acidic, very much acidic. Because, because again, doctors recommend to, to re reduce uh, acidity of the gastric juice. And this is not good because, again, if, you cannot cons if your acidity of the gastric juice is not enough, you first you cannot uh, digest proteins, and these proteins are getting uh, food for bad bacteria, unfriendly bacteria, so you get toxins. And then next, uh, you, what is happening, you are getting uh, bacteria not killed in the stomach. Acidity in your stomach is, uh, should be very high to kill all the bacteria. If you don't kill bacteria, you are sick. You are getting sick. So this is absolutely important. And what, what you can use, uh, lemon juice, uh, citric acid, help you to improve the acidity. But also this chlorides, magnesium chloride, uh, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride are important to produce uh, in your body. Uh, the carbo, uh, hydro, hydro, hydrochloric acid, which is the subs, the acid which is in, in your stomach. Okay, and then as I said, our digestive system is so much different from primates, from all other uh, herbivores. So you need good food. Good food. This is what I tell you. This is why it is digestive system. Your knowledge about the digestive system is so important. And you better take care and uh, about it, okay? That's all. Thank you for your time. Take care.